In this video, I will give you an idea about how a ripped balcony deck that would cantilever away from the home would be installed. But first, we are going to start with taking a look at how the house would be framed without the deck. So let's go ahead and remove some of the parts here. Sheathing, and here we have a floor that is joist with 2 by 10s conventional framing. These are not truss joists. Conventional frame 2 by 12, 16 inches on center. And that's how it would look. Now let's go back here for a second. Take a look at basically what would be coming off of here would, would be maybe a master bedroom, something like that with a sliding glass door or some French doors. In our first example, I will be using full length joist. And I believe these are about 22 foot long. And if you have joists that you can't get 22 foot long, then, then the second method here in the video will be helpful for you. If you can, then this will work. Remember the cantilevers need to stick out one third and then go back two thirds. If we have a five foot cantilever, then the joists need to go back at least 10 foot to support the cantilever. Now the size of the joists, I can't provide you with all the time. You know, um, working out here in California, Southern California, we use two by 12s and they would rip them down and uh, they would be about six foot balconies and they seem to work. But with snow loads and stuff like that, you might need a different system. So here we have the balcony. It will also slope. We have a one inch drop and that of course is to um, help waterproof the joist or the balcony from the home. And a one inch would be minimum. Uh, we used to actually notch two inches into these babies, but you could get to where you're taking out a lot of, you're really creating a maybe a two by eight and that might not be good. So it'll slope a quarter of an inch per foot. And I'll put a link here to provide you with more information if you need help with that. Some of you might already know how to uh, shape the joists. A quarter inch per foot. If this is drops down an inch, uh, two by 12 is 11 and a half inches. This would be 10 and a half inches from here to here. Uh, if, we, if we go a quarter of an inch per foot and we have a five foot extension here for the cantilever, then we would need to drop at least an inch and a quarter here, which means that uh, this measurement here, I believe, would be nine and a quarter inches. So that would give us a slope. The balcony will need a slope, and of course it will need to slope away from the building. Here's the one inch drop I'm talking about. Uh, you will need to nail some blocks, whether they are two by fours or two by sixes or larger, you will need something there to help give you a perimeter nailing for the plywood that you will be using for the deck. Don't forget that the deck plywood might need to be an exterior grade plywood also. It might need to be a special plywood, it might not be the, you might not be able to use the same stuff you use inside the house. Give you a cutaway section here, give you an idea. The bottom will be level the top will be sloping. And that is it for example one. In example two, we will be using smaller joist. And these are, we're going to use 16 foot joist here. A five foot um, cantilever again. And this time we are going to have double double joists around the edge. And I have seen them before where they put double joists all the way around. Double joists here, double joists here. I really wouldn't see where you would need to have a rim or the edge here or where it would be need to be a doubler, but I have seen that before. And of course it's five foot sticking out going back at least 10 feet. And since they are 16 footers, we know that uh, they're going back at least 11 feet. So that will make the engineers a little more happier. Now this, on this one here I went ahead and cut a two inch drop out of it to give you an idea of what that might look like. Um, but again two inches now we're taking this from a 2 by 12 to a 2 by 10 and then when we get out a little farther out on the edge it's going to be an inch and a quarter less than that. So basically 
it would be shaping down to a two by eight and that might not be acceptable to an engineer. Uh, the blocks, I went ahead and used a full length block here. This way you could get some type of nailing. If you're going to use siding, um, plywood or something on, on the bottom of the joist um, per the ceiling, then a block like this might be better than having a, a, just a block for the upper plywood. Going back here, we will also need to install blocks at the end of the uh, joists to support them and they will need to nail to the existing joists and that's a 16 inch on center staggered nailing um, and hopefully that makes sense you would nail let's say you started here you would go 16 inches all the way down and then you would start instead of starting here on the bottom you would start in the middle and then go 16 inches that way. So you would have one here, one here, one here, but they'd be 16 inches on center spaced on a line running uh, horizontal basically. So you wouldn't go, uh, and I've seen it too, where they just nailed 16 inches, you know, put one at the bottom, one at the top, go 16 inches, but that wouldn't be the staggered nailing. Now I did, wanted to give you an idea here, just in case it doesn't work out. Um, let's go back here go back to the top just in case it doesn't work out you know I nailed these would all be nailed or fastened to the other joists that would uh, be used for the floor framing and if the deck needed to be a specific size these joists might not line up that would give you a situation like this that's kind of why I drew this one in this one over here nails right up against the other joists for the floor joists this one here if you needed to uh, move it a little bit this give you an idea how that would happen back over here blocking on this end again we can see where we nailed this up against this joist give you a top view of everything five foot one third two thirds back you have to block all of this it's a lot of work that goes into some of these and here you can see the drop and again it's two inches this drop will be used for waterproofing if you just came out even and the floor joists and all this was the same you wouldn't be able to waterproof the I shouldn't say that you could waterproof it I'd imagine you could do it pretty good with the materials they have now but uh, this was a common method that we used in the 70s and 80s and again I the uh, towards the 90s I these decks disappeared they weren't being installed anymore and I think a lot of that had to do with the budgets that these home builders had so this gives you an idea what it would look like kind of sticking out here you have your door here you would have a handrail that come around it and there we pan out a little thing sticking out that is your ripped cantilever um, balcony for a two-story home.